Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. Now we need to start looking at some of the theoretical background we need to have before actually starting to write our first driver. So I have a table here that provides some comparison between user mode development and kernel mode development in several terms. So I'm going to go over that and discuss each one in some detail so we get a sense of how things work in kernel mode as opposed to user mode. And so I'm assuming that you've done some user mode development in the past. And so if you have some unhanded exception, for instance, the worst that could happen in user mode is that your process crashes. And so you can just start it again and start debugging and understanding what's going on. In kernel mode, however, any unhanded exception causes the entire system to crash, generating the infamous blue screen of death. So that means when writing a driver, you need to be extra careful because anything bad that happens has a system-wide effect. Now let's take a look at termination. Whenever a process terminates, for whatever reason, all private memory for the process is freed all the handles are being closed and so on. So nothing remains of that process once that process is gone. And so it doesn't matter whether the process exited cleanly or because of an unhandled exception or was terminated abruptly, it doesn't really matter. Nothing remains uh, from that process. However, in kernel mode, if your driver unloads and you haven't freed everything you allocated, then you get a leak and that leak will not be resolved until the next boot. And so is it possible for the kernel to kind of track all your memory allocations and then once the driver unloads, will just free your allocations for you? So technically that would have been possible. However, the kernel can't really take that risk because it may be the case that the driver allocated some memory, for instance, and gave another driver a pointer to that memory because remember all drivers are in system space so they can share pointers very easily and so perhaps that memory is intended to be used by another driver and so when the first driver unloads that memory should not really be freed and so the kernel can't really take these chances because anything bad happening would cause a blue screen so essentially a driver is responsible for taking care of its own uh, stuff and making sure it doesn't leak anything when the driver unloads. And of course, also during uh, running of the driver, we don't want to leak any resources. However, nobody's going to clean up after the driver. What about API errors? And so we know that in user mode, for instance, many functions return Boolean to indicate whether they succeed or fail. Some of them return handles, some of them return the actual error code directly. And so sometimes in user mode, people get a bit sloppy and not check every return value from every API. And worst case that could happen is that something will, will go wrong and eventually maybe the process will crash. Again, this is a very localized effect. However, within the kernel, it's much more dangerous. And so it's always a good idea to look at every return value from every function. There may be some very few edge cases where, where you don't actually have to do that, but in most cases you should never ignore um, errors or return values from APIs. The term RQL that you see here, which is short for interrupt request level, is a term that is not known in user mode, and that's because its value is always zero, so there's no point in actually um, defining such uh, a, a property. And RQL is the property of a processor and we won't discuss RQL in this course but I just want you to know that in kernel mode RQL may be higher for a processor for a time uh, and when it's uh, two or higher things change and you're very limited in what you can do. For example, you cannot access page memory. You cannot wait for kernel object. And so this is actually very important in some scenarios, but we won't look at uh, these kinds of scenarios in this course. Generally speaking, if you have some bad coding uh, in your application, for instance, then again, 
most in most cases that's going to be localized to your process if you have bad coding in your driver then this could have a system-wide effect again uh, I'm just emphasizing the fact that you need to be extra careful when writing drivers when you want to test and debug your driver with user mode is fairly easy you can just go ahead and set up breakpoints in Visual Studio and then just uh, hit F5 and start debugging or start testing uh, on your own machine and it's fairly easy in most cases. However, for proper testing and debugging with a driver, you have to use a different machine. You have to use two machines. The target machine is going to run the driver and then you'll be able to set up proper breakpoints and you have your host machine that is going to run the debugger itself. So things are naturally more complex, less easy uh, to use. If you're talking about standard libraries that you're probably familiar with in the C or C++ user mode world, uh, such as the standard C++ library or the various libraries you can locate uh, on the web. And so in user mode you can use practically anything However, in kernel mode, you can't use almost anything. You have to write things yourself if they're not provided by kernel APIs. And that's because of the dependencies all the user mode libraries have on user mode DLLs, which cannot be uh, used within the kernel. Exceptions. Exception, um, exceptions is a way to handle errors in user mode. And so in user mode, you can use the C++ exceptions, for instance, if you're using C++. If you're using uh, higher level languages such as uh, C Sharp or Java, you can use their own exception handling mechanism. The other option is to use the internal real mechanism Windows provides called Structured Exception Handling or SEH. And so you have really uh, various possibilities in user mode. However, in kernel mode, there is no C++ runtime. Then the only option you get is using SEH. And again, we probably will see one example of SEH uh, in this course um, and perhaps see some more examples in a future course. And generally, uh, C++ um, is something you can use in a kernel driver. It is possible. However, there is no C++ runtime, which means that some things just cannot work. So let me expand on that a little bit. And so in the old days, drivers were written in pure C. In fact, Microsoft didn't support C++ uh, before 2012. So before we just through the 2012 and the Windows driver kit in Windows 8, you had to write uh, drivers in pure C if you wanted to get uh, official support from Microsoft. However, C++ is now officially supported since uh, 2012 and that includes the latest uh, standards such as C++ 17, even C++ 20, at least at the time of this recording. And so you can use every feature of C++ that doesn't depend on any runtime. So for instance, you cannot use try catch or the standard template library or use the operators new and delete directly. However, you can overload the new delete operators to call the real functions that you need to call in the kernel to allocate and deallocate a memory. If you have objects which are global, global variables that have constructors, these contract constructors will not run. And that's because there is no C++ runtime. And so in user mode, if you have global objects that have constructors, the C runtime, which actually runs your main function, is the one that's calling these constructors and then calls your main function. And so you don't have that kind of support uh, within the kernel. However, it's fairly easy to get around that. So if, for example, you can create uh, an object which doesn't have a constructor, but instead has some init method that you can just go ahead and call from your driver entry function. Now, so I'm not going to use C++ uh, or at least no, nothing special from C++ in this course. However, I can use some of the niceties of C++ uh, fairly easy, such as using the auto keyword or the ability to define a variable anywhere in, in, without having to do that at the beginning of, of a scope. And so um, I can do these kinds of things uh, for, uh, to make my life just easier. However, in a future course, we may use some more uh, C++ as, uh, as needed. Now, when we build 
applications and when we build drivers, we can build them in two modes. In user mode, we know them as debug and release. And so debug typically contains lots of debug information. There are no compiler optimizations. And so we have uh, a binary which is easiest to debug. In release build, we want to make the binary as small as possible and the code as fast as possible. And so we uh, get less uh, debug information typically. We have uh, full optimizations by the compiler by default and this is the way we deploy the, the actual uh, target binary that we're building. Now in kernel mode it's actually the same idea however the definitions are a bit different and so sometimes you'll find the term checked build so checked build means debug and free build means release and the symbol that distinguishes debug from release is called dbg and it's defined to be one in uh, debug builds. And so that's different than in user mode, where in user mode typically the symbol underscore debug is uh, defined to indicate a uh, debug build. So in, in the kernel headers, this is the symbol that's defined, dbg. And so if you need to do some conditional compilation, you can do that by using uh, this uh, symbol. Mm -hmm.